So 352.44 on PVC says, expansion fittings must be provided if the expansion and contraction length change. Per t the table is expected to be a quarter inch or greater. So are you going to get me that table, Brian? Sure. 52.44. So if the expansion is greater than a quarter inch, okay. All right, Brian, let's just go with 100 degrees, 100 right. feet, and, and tell us how you're going to get 100 it. feet. Okay, so here's, if, if we look right here, here's my temperature change. Okay. And length of change in conduit in inches per 100 feet. So if I go. Oh, down, oh, 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 no, no, slow down, slow down, slow down. Okay. Go back up again. Okay. That, so you're saying. Length change of PVC conduit inches per 100 feet. Oh, okay. So if we know the inches per hundred feet, and if we know the temperature change, right? Then it's okay. Go down. So I'm going to go down to 100 degrees, which is right, right here, which is 4.06 inches of change per hundred feet of raceway. Right, Eric. You mentioned yesterday you thought about like 3.5. Yeah, and that's really bothered me since I I mentioned that. I think I was thinking about steel or aluminum with multipliers, and just I just. Got messed up. That's okay. I just just wanted to make sure we got back and we, we came just back. Just because he's the only person that hasn't made a mistake so far. So, you know, he's really bothering him that he finally <laughs> made a mistake. <laughs> so okay, it, but while we're looking at this table, that's why I, I knew it was four inches, 100 feet. Okay. Right. Because I've done this for a while. But if this was steel, we'd have to go back to 300 dot, I think it was 5C or some crazy rule. So Yep. Is it 5C? Uh, well, we don't know. It's, uh, so I can pull it up here real quick. I mean, I don't even know if I would remember that rule. Even number. It's 0. 0.2. 300 dot. I'm, I'm looking. It's, a, it's an informational note. Is it 300.7? Isn't it, isn't it? Maybe 7C. Because it's in the... Can't be 5, because of course it can't be 5, because 5 is underground, so it can't be 5. And those of you that are watching okay, this, put the video on pause, go check it out. 7B. Okay, 300.5, is that what it is? 300.7B. No. 300.7. 300, I'm sorry, right, not 5. 300.7B yep. has an informational note, and that note says that the expansion characteristics of steel shall be 20%. Got it right here. A nominal number for steel conduit can be determined by multiplying the expansion length in table 352.44 by 0.2. So a 100-foot run of steel at 100 degrees, and I think 100 degrees is a reasonable thing, yeah. is going to come out to be about less than an inch. 0 0.8, 0 0.81. Yeah, 0 0.8. Okay, but what about if it was aluminum? Then we talked about 0.4. Then it would be twice that. It's 0.4, so it's 1. So that's going to be about an inch and a half. 1.6. Okay, so yeah. we see how this, how this table works out? So now back over here. Now, also, now straight runs between securely mounted items such as boxes, combos, and elbows. Um, I, I, this graphic is confusing me. I'm not quite sure if this means that this rule of this expansion applies only between straight runs, securely mounted, and I think that's the intent. So we have to change the text so it reflects it. So what I'm saying is the expansion fitting only measurement, by the way, the measurement is between this box and this box. You follow me? There is no expansion fitting over here. And elbows. So let me go back and see if that graphic was wrong. So we don't need an expansion fitting here. Uh, why? Because there's two elbows. Well, that's a good question. Why don't we go to the rule and let's read 352.44 and when do we have to have an expansion fitting? So says, expansion fittings for PVC conduit shall be provided to compensate for thermal expansion and contraction where the length change in accordance with table 352.44 is expected to be a quarter inch or greater in a straight run between securely mounted items such as boxes, cabinets, elbows, or other conduit terminations. Securely mounted. Yes, so both of those elbows are definitely securely mounted. Well, let's go back here. I don't know. You're saying? Well, it's going into, I mean, if you look at the top, it's going into an LB, which is definitely not going to move. So you're saying, I'm thinking this PVC, this this right here is going to move, this end right here. That's, I think that's going to. Yeah. Oh, it's going to move, all right. Right. 
It's not secure to mount it. Break it. The elbow is not secure. I, I don't think so because we didn't use the fittings that you used before. We used the fittings that actually slide. Okay, so you're telling me that that piece of conduit growing four inches is not going to break that LB. I don't know if it will or won't. And I don't know if I, I'm just saying, I'm reading the language. It's securely mounted. So maybe we can say, okay, we don't know if it is or isn't. So maybe we decide we're going to do what? Let's put expansion fittings there. So you're saying, if I'm just making sure I'm clear, you're saying an elbow doesn't mean, even though it says elbows, is not securely mounted unless what? When is an elbow securely okay, mounted? Then you missed what I just said. I am. I'm thinking, trying to figure out yeah, what you're saying. You're thinking saying. something. But I said, that's going to be a judgment call whether this elbow is considered securely mounted because there is no straps that's securing that elbow. It's just holding it up in the air because these straps are not designed to be securing anything down, right? Because we don't want straps that's going to lock it. We want straps that's going to allow this thing to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. All I'm right. saying. And I don't know what an elbow is that could be secured. I, mean, I guess maybe if it's you coming could, up could, a wall, you could put it right here. Something. Right, you could put a strap right there. Right, you could put a strap because now if you put a strap there, guess what? That thing's not moving. And I'm not saying that you should not put expansion fittings anywhere. I'm saying we should at least understand the mechanics that's taking place because sometimes the rule might not be 100 feet, but might only be 10 feet, 15 feet, 20 feet. You with me? Mm -hmm. So if that elbow is securely fastened, like right here, straight runs between securely mounted items such as boxes, cabinets, and elbows, because now we know what? For sure we can agree 100%. This is securely mounted from this point to this point. From this elbow here in 90 over to here, if I was an inspector and if I was an installer, I would want to put it there. But maybe the, you know what, let's go back to that table, Brian. How far of a length of a pipe do I have to have before I have to have an expansion fitting? Well, that's what I was just looking at. So at a 10 degree temperature change. No, no, 100 degree temperature change. Seven feet. At 100, okay, at 100 degree temperature change, it's going to expand how many feet? 4.06. Right, so go down to 100 degrees. Yeah. Go down to 100. Okay. That's going to go four inches, right? That's four yeah. inches for 100 feet. Yeah. The code says you have to have expansion fittings when it's expected to be greater than a quarter of an inch. Than a quarter of an inch. So a quarter of an inch. It's a factor of 16. About no, six it's, inches. No, it's a quarter of an inch. <laughs> so yeah, about so six feet. A quarter of an inch goes into four 16 times. Yeah, about six feet. So it would be 100 divided by 16. So give me about how many feet? Be about six, 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 six feet. seven feet, yeah. No, a little six, bit, a six little. or seven feet. Six point two five feet. So, anytime you have a length of pipe, a ten foot length of pipe, and a hundred degree temperature change, you have to have an expansion fitting. If it is secured between points that it can't move. So now, looking at this example right here. Let's just assume this was 20 feet, and we have a shorter one. Let's say, whatever, you put an elbow. And let's say you, you went up here and you put an elbow there. Well, you might say, well, you know what? I think that elbow is not securely fastened, and I don't have to have an expansion fitting because the elbow is not secured. It is moving back and forth and back and forth. All I'm asking is that we understand what it says then the authority having jurisdiction makes a decision, but I'd like you to have the tools to say, wait a minute now. And I, and I just want to be clear. It's not like I've ever done this right. So I'm not acting <laughs> yeah. like, I'm not acting like I've put these in. Okay. So don't, don't misunderstand me here. Yeah. Cause yeah, I'm yeah. looking at this table now and all the times that I'm going, okay, so I can put in seven feet of PVC. I can tell you for sure. Now. Okay. No, hold on. Florida. Let's see. What does it get really cold in the winter time? See the brain 30? going now. Go back to the ASHRAE the table. ASHRAE table. You see the brain going. Now he's trying to. Oh, but I got a it. max temperature, which is like 111. So I got about 80 degrees, which means I'm screwed. 
<laughs> I've never put in a piece of PVC ever, I don't think, ever. Also, like correct. research said, if you're in the sun, you have to add 30 degrees. No, you don't. No. You don't add, no, no, you no. add 30 you degrees. You don't? No. Oh, no, oh, for expansion yes, fittings. Yes, you do. Got for the expansion oh, I'm absolutely right, fittings. Michael. For expansion fittings, for the purposes of establishing the temperature, yeah. we get the we get the maximum temperature range, which is basically 100 degrees almost everywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, and then you add 30% to that, which means it's 130 degrees. So we know that you add 30% to four. What's yeah, three times four? That's five another and a quarter five inches. and a quarter inches. Okay. Divide that by the multiplier. So it now comes about three feet. Yeah. You need to have an expansion. Like I said, not acting like I ever did this correctly. I was all proud of myself because I've even used them before. Like, I'm like, that. man, I've bought but, like. But, but the thing is, once you get to this point, you're actually going to use them. Now we have to use them correctly. Yeah. All right. And now it's a matter of, well, where were you in this 100-degree temperature range? You know oh, yeah, that's right. another whole when, story. <laughs> when yeah. did you put it in? Did you put it in when it was right in the middle of the 50? I mean, right in the middle of 50% yep. temperature change? Did you put it in when it was, like, really cold? Did you put it in when it was really, really hot? And then you got to adjust They do that. actually have a little chart right in the instructions. They do. That make it very yes. easy. Yes. As long as you know what the temperature is. Uh, right. Which is where your smartphone is handy. So now, question for you, Brian. Yeah. Looking at... This rule here, we know for sure that this is secure. Going straight screen so we can see it better. This is straight runs between securely mounted. Is that right? That's how I look at it. Okay. Not quite sure that I always absolutely would 100% say that this is a straight run between where I have two 90s. Depending okay. upon whether I want it to be or not. I mean, just for the record, I, I like what you're saying because that makes more of what I did wrong less wrong. Right, exactly. So I'm actually okay no, no, with no, what no, you're no. saying. And that's what I'm trying to say that for you. You know, I'm trying to say that. But can we agree of research? Well, while you can move lengthwise and push the upper part of the 90 off to the left, the lower part of the 90 is locked, locked in place and it can't. So that expansion is going to push against that 90 here. Uh, on the vertical piece, if you're looking at the expansion of the horizontal piece. Well, again, yeah. let's make that decision. The best thing is what? Let's just assume that's a fixed point, and let's assume that's a fixed point. But if you screw up, then you're going to say, well, it's not a fixed point, right? So it all depends on how you want to go there. All right, so we understand now what the rule says. How easy was that?